Yeah, boys. You know what time it is? It's pizza time! That's right. Today is going to be part one of a four part video series of different styles of pizza I'm going to make for you, freaks. That's right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make first one's going to be a thin crust for all you carbohydrate goofballs and afraid of a little dough, afraid of a little bread, afraid of a little flour. Oh, you keto guys. It's not keto friendly. Trust me. There ain't no freaking cauliflower in this crust. This video is going to be thin crust. The second video will be hand tossed. Third, I'm going to do a Detroit style deep dish. Four, Chicago style deep dish. When I'm talking thin crust, I'm talking thin. And I'm going to make it thin and I'm going to show you how. I got my dough. I got my plastic mat and I'll show you how we're going to do this on the plastic mat. Now, normally thin crust pizzas, nine ounces, maybe 10 ounces of dough at the max 10. So we're going to do my, my trick. You guys have seen this before. I made flatbread like that. Where I'm going to sandwich that in between two of these uh, cutting boards and I'm going to take and use a rolling pin. That way, it's all nice in there, and I'll have a big old mess on my hand. All right, those in between the two pieces of plastic cutting board. I'm going to attempt to roll this mother out. Just got to give her a few little starting spots. We'll get her going. All right, here's the rolled out dough. I got her pretty thin. Not perfectly round, but I'll round it up when I get it on the... Uh, on the cooker and I'm going to show you talk about the cooker in a minute here. Many people out there know what a dough docker is and has and what it does. I don't see any. <laughs> Anyhow, dough docker basically is a small little rolling device. It has little nubbies sticking out of it and what you do is you roll it over top and it puts little little indent holes in, in the dough. And what it's supposed to do supposed to prevent any type of air bubbles from coming out of the dough so like if you had a small air pocket like right there you know that might be a small air pocket right there from becoming a big air pocket it's supposed to pierce them well, I have one and I can't find it so I'm gonna painstakingly use a fork and dock this dough just kind of do this number see that what I'm gonna do. But anyhow, now if you ever see a pizza shop using a dough docker on anything other than a thin crust pizza, if you see them using it on a hand toss or a deep dish pizza, leave. Just just leave and keep their car on the way out to the parking lot too because you just don't use dockers on anything but other than a thin crust pizza. There's no reason to. It's ridiculous. We got a little Caesars around the corner here. Well, it's not really around the corner, but you know what I mean. It's in town. And they got the De Detroit style pizza, which I made a lot of. I've, I've done hundreds, hundreds of them. You use your fingers to kind of work the dough out. It's time consuming, but you don't use a dough docker on it. What that does is it compresses the dough down and what you get is dense dough. Well, when they first came out with that Detroit style pizza, they were doing it the right way. I was digging it. I'm like, oh, okay. Hell, Detroit style pizza for eight bucks. You know, hell of a lot cheaper than Jets and whatnot. Well, here we go. They did it for about uh, about six months like that. Then I get the pizza one time and I bite into it. And what the hell's wrong with this crust? It's all dense. I look on the bottom and it had the telltale sign. 
you could actually see where the docker was rolled on there. I called them there bitched. So what are you guys doing? Oh, we're just trying to find a way to make it go faster. I says you can't on a double rise dough with deep dish. It takes a long time. You gotta hand press it, you gotta fingers. You can't use no docker. Well, they just say they didn't listen. They're still doing it today. Bunch of idiots. Alright, I think that's good enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what we're gonna cook this pizza on. This here is called the Presto Pizzazz Pizza Cooker. It's actually a pretty cool machine. Think about it. It's got an upper and a lower heating element. And this tray, which your pizza sits on, spins and rotates. Okay? And it cooks that way. A timer on the top, and you got a selector here, which is very cool. You can put the lower element on, upper element on, or both. Rebel could take a take a hint from this. Uh, this thing here, it's got basically instructions on the back here. I think fresh pizza's dual for 11 to 13 minutes. This thing we want crisp, so we're gonna be uh, probably putting it on longer. We want it really crisp on the bottom. So anyhow, I'm gonna get this dough on this disc. Then I forgot to show you that you're gonna have to do this before you put the dough on there. You're either gonna wanna put some uh, cornmeal down, which I don't particularly like using, or oil. Don't, don't bother using high dollar olive oil. This is just cheap corn oil. Okay, we got the pizza dough spread out pretty much. Now, next thing goes on, obviously, is sauce. Now, sauce is kind of important, okay? You don't want an overpowering sauce, but you want to be able to taste the tomatoes. But you, a lot of people put basil, heavy basil in there. Don't go too heavy on that stuff. I used to make my own sauce, and I would go through about four gallons of that stuff a day. And I just don't have it in me to make a home sauce here at the house, especially at a low consumption level. So I, I worked around and uh, I found a sauce that I like and uh, it works well on pizza. Right here. I'll turn that up so you can see. Prego. Three cheese. It's got cheese already built in, which is nice. And it's got all your spices that you need. It, it, it really tastes good on pizza. There's another one too, believe it or not. A three cheese Spartan brand. I ran out of this, I couldn't find it, and I had to go with Spartan. That tasted pretty good too, so it wasn't bad. So I liked it. All right. I like my pizzas a little bit on the saucier side anyways. So we'll start in the middle. Work our way out on this. Oh, it smells good. I don't know if you can see the spices in there. But they got their, their spices on there. There we go. She sauced up. You can see the spices in there. No, they're in there. It's good stuff, man. It smells really good. So what's next, folks? You know what's coming next. The snow from heaven. for toppings. I want to talk about a bit about toppings. <laughs> toppings is a peculiar subject. Nobody really, you can't get two people to agree on what toppings they like, you know. But I'm going to give you a guideline here. 
what you don't want to do. Never, ever, ever go over four topics. Three is pretty prime, okay? Four is okay, which I'm going to go with. You go over four topics, you're just confusing your palate. Listen to me, confusing your palate. I don't even know what the hell a palate is. For me, a palate is something you put in the back of a truck. But anyhow, you got too much going on. You know, if people get this garbage can pizza that's got every damn thing in the world on it. No, nah, 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 don't do it. Four toppings or less. Three is primal. Anyhow, the first thing we're going to put on here is the pepperoni. Pepperoni's going on first. That's pepperoni, right there. That's just the way you need to have it. Unless you have a problem with pepperoni. If you got a problem with pepperoni, you're not American. So my next meat topping is gonna go on, which is ham. I like cubed ham. I like putting cubed ham on there. People use like sliced lunch meat. Which that's fine, but now the next thing on the menu is the onions. Diced onions. Now, the mushrooms. Just put that on there. Kind of like put that in a circle like you did with the, with the pecoronis. I should do it. Got a couple fell on the other side. I'll put them on in a second. There you go. There's a pizza, boys. That's a thin crust pizza. Homemade dough. Now this machine is kind of a bugger to load. That's one of the problems with it. Let me tell you, this thing's over 15 years old. So, it's not like they're new. You gotta get it on just right. You can tell you got it in right, it'll bounce and it won't spin. I'm gonna plug this bugger in. See your spin? The heating element's here and here, and it's got a taper that goes like, I don't know, a slight, slight taper. You know, this side's taller than here because it's getting more heat all the time there. I got it on dual, and I'm going to turn this thing on. It's been running for about, about four minutes now. We're starting to get some steam. The pecoronis are cooking. You know, we're starting to get some steam off of it. We're about eight minutes in. The pecoronis are really cooking. You can see the grease coming off of them. The middle's even starting to cook good. Even steaming in the middle. Got a little boilage in the middle. Coming along nicely. Main thing is, I want that bottom crust crisp. Getting close to the end of the cooking cycle. Getting real close. Steaming all the way over here. Dinger just went off, and I can tell you right now, that crust does not know where near good enough for my liking. So, let's look at it. It's not, I don't know if you can see it, but I don't want to ruin it, but it's not done enough. It's color done. Color done. Let's see what it looked like on the bottom. Oh yeah, she's done. See how brown that is? Yep. That should be good and crispy. That's what we're looking for. All right. Transferred it over from the cooking tray. 
to the cutting tray, to the serving tray. You don't want to cut that on that. So let's see if we got any crunchy. Hard to get through. Take a look at this first piece right here. See, holds up, holds nice together. It's not rippy flopping. Look at the bottom. You can get that in a shot. There you go. See that? Take a bite out of this bug. There we are. Plain crispy, no. watching and uh, made a ham be with you.